In this lecture, we'll talk about extending that idea of linear regression into a broader framework that can encompass more types of models called a generalized linear model. So it turns out that you can use this larger framework to fit a variety of models. It can include linear models, kind of like we just looked at, but also include other types like logistic models and Poisson models. And it's really nice because they all work within the same framework where the coding in R is very, very similar regardless of which specific type of model you're trying to fit. We'll look first at how we can use the GLM function rather than the LM function that we looked at in the last video lecture to fit linear models. In this case, um, it's, it's doing a very similar idea. It's just using a, a different algorithm for fitting those. So it uses least squares for the, the linear model with LM, and it's using maximum likelihood with GLM. Now it turns out that those will give you the exact same estimates, regardless of which you pick. So we can look at that. We were using in the last slide this uh, World Cup data set, so you can get that set up. And then we're just using a few of the columns, so you can limit to just those few. And then you'll want to make sure that tidyverse is loaded as well as broom. So the last time we used a linear, we fit a linear model of tackles regressed on time. And then the data, of course, is the World Cup. So we use this kind of model to fit it. You can fit this instead with the GLM function just by using GLM. But the, the way that you tell it which data set to use and then also the, the uh, model structure is exactly the same. So we can run that. And if we run the two and compare our coefficients, they're going to be exactly the same for the two ways of fitting the, the, the um, linear regression model. It turns out, though, that we can use this framework to fit a lot of different types of models. So we'll just be changing some pieces to do that. One of them is that for a linear model, we're assuming that the, the error distribution for the model is normal, that it follows that Gaussian distribution. And for these other types, we might want to relax that and use different distributions, so binomial or Poisson. This allows us to do that. It also allows us to change the link, the way that we, um, the transformation of the outcome variable that we think it is associated with the linear part of the model, that part we put on the right-hand side of the equation where we put our independent variables. So there are different types of models that you can fit along these lines, but some classic ones that come up often in data analysis are a logistic model where you're using a binomial for the error distribution and a logit link, and then a Poisson where you're using a Poisson distribution, and then a log link. Now, one thing you will have to keep in mind as you do this is because there's a, a link function, some transformation of the outcome before we, we assume it's associated with the linear part of the model that we have, then when we get the estimated coefficients back, we'll often have to do a transformation on those to kind of interpret them. So let's say that we wanted to fit a GLM, but with a Poisson, a distribution for the outcome and a log link because those tackles are counts where we have this case where it looks like it maybe is closer to a Poisson distribution for the outcome that we're looking at. We can take the same model that we have using GLM, but then we can add family, and then we can do Poisson, and then we can specify that the link that we want equals log. And this part, actually, we probably wouldn't need with Poisson because it, it's the default for Poisson to have a log link in R. So we can run that, and we can get output in the same way. We can also use things like the tidy function from Broom to get this output in terms of a, a tibble that we can use to work with a little bit more easily later. We can also use augment, and in this case, if you put in the fitted values, you'll see that because we did that log link, that we've got this kind of nonlinear association being fit to the model. When you do that, again, because this form of GLM has a link that's not identity, so it's not kind of one-to-one. -one. Instead, it's really doing some kind of transformation of the outcome before it's compared to the independent variables, to the linear part of the model. Because of that, we need to reverse that 
on the fitted values before we can do this plot where we make the comparison. So since the link was a log link, we're doing an exponent to kind of reverse that action. We won't get into a lot of different ways to do our formulas for these for these models, but I think it's helpful to at least introduce you to this so that you can come back as you're taking statistics classes and see how to translate something you talk about in statistics into a way that you might put the regression model, the, that, that formula piece in R. So there are a few different conventions you can use in this regression model piece right here. So far we've just taken the dependent variable and put it first and then done a tilde. And then we've done independent on, on the right-hand side. If we have more than one independent var um, variable that we want to include, we can do the plus sign to link those. So this is going to do both time and position. And if we fit that, we can see now we've got time. But then we've also got these estimates for um, each of the, the, the different levels of the position factor other than the first one, defender, which is serving as the default the kind of baseline. We can also use things like I if we wanted to do some operation on two of the variables before we estimate the model coefficient for them. So because the model formula includes plus to link the different independent variables, we can't use plus by itself if we really wanted to say um, fit one term as one variable plus another. Instead, to protect it, you have to wrap it in this I function. We can also get either an interaction or the main effects and the interaction between two variables. So we could go back and look at maybe time and passes. So we've got two continuous variables about there. So if we do time and passes, we can do the colon between them instead of the plus sign. Oh, make sure I run all of that. Maybe we don't have passes. Shot. There we go. All right, so this is giving us an intercept, and then the one other term is actually the interaction between time and shots. Um, so how the, those kind of act together. If we wanted to get independent effects for both time and shots and an interaction between the two, we can do an asterisk there instead. And so now you, you see we're getting back an independent estimate for time, one for shots, and then an estimate of the interaction between the two. Again, these are all things, these interactions that, that might be covered in a statistics course that you take something like STAT 511 or STAT 512 or one of the STAR regression courses here at CSU. If you wanted to fit all of the variables that are included in the data set except the response, you can do just a single dot and that will fit everything but this column you've already specified. If you wanted to fit everything but one, you could do a dot and a minus and then take out the, the one column you don't want to fit. And then finally, the one represents the intercept. So if you wanted to fit an intercept only model, that's really just going to give you kind of the average in the data for a variable then you can do a one. If you wanted to fit a model that excluded the intercepts, you can take this idea of the negative and you can do a negative one before you put in some of the other values. So there are plenty of wonderful resources for finding out more about how to use R for statistics, for hypothesis testing, and for um, regression modeling. Some that are good include statistical analysis with R for dummies. This is one that's free online through the CSU library. The R book, which also is free online through the CSU library, that's got a whole chapter that covers regression modeling and some other chapters that cover linear and generalized linear regression modeling. There's also R for data science, section four of that covers this in a lot of depth. If you want to get much more advanced into these different ideas and think about um, fitting linear models and GLMs and R and really into the details of, of the linear algebra behind it and all of that, there are some excellent books by uh, Faraway. So this is the same Faraway that we use the package for. 
Uh, there's a linear model that gets deeply into the linear model component, and then there's one called extending the linear model that gets more deeply into GLMs and does examples of things like logistic and Poisson models.